Detroit basketball. All right, now we got that out the way. What a game. <laughs> Man, this game was wild, man. I was having flashbacks from the last game, from the Hornets game. Pistons made us, Pistons made us work for this one, man. They made us, they made us work for this one. So, let's get into it, man. The Pistons win tonight, one twenty-two to one twenty-one, at home against the Atlanta Hawks to move to four and six on the season. <sighs> All right, man. Like, I, I want to be, I want to be happy about this win. If I'm being honest, just, I just can't be too excited about this win, man. The Pistons were up 24 points in this game, 25 points in this game, in the first half. And I tweeted early that this game was over because I had confidence that they had learned a lesson from the <laughs> from previous games that you can't take your foot off the gas, right? And I gotta give I gotta give the Hawks credit. They didn't play much better in the second half. They played inspired basketball in the second half. They played harder, especially defensively. Uh, Dyson Daniels is a dog on defense, man. He's one of the best defenders I would have to say in the league right now. Um, and he was tasked with guarding K tonight, which we'll get to a little bit later. Um, but this, yeah, the, the Hawks did fight, but the Pistons should not. There's no way they should have gotten back into this game. There's no way they shouldn't got back into this game. Two lack of days ago, too many turnovers. They allowed them to get back into the game. I mean, look, a win is a win, right? I mean, if we would have won last game, I would I would have taken that too. But the Pistons have to continue to work on what I've always talked about. And that's playing four quarters of basketball. We've seen it now in pretty much every quarter. This season, whether it's the first, second, third, or fourth, where the Pistons just take their foot off the gas, but they come out slow. Early in the season, they were starting games slow, and they had to try to catch up and get back into the game late. And then the last few games, you've seen them get out to good starts and then take their foot off the gas. Tonight, it was the third quarter. The Pistons were on their way to playing the best game of their season. They just had way too many mental breakdowns in the second half. So let's get to some initial thoughts. Jalen Duren was obviously out tonight with that ankle injury that he sustained last game against the Hornets. And some may have thought that Paul Reed may have started just because of how well he played last game. But the idea was to set the tone. Right, Isaiah Stewart came in and he set the tone. You know when he's playing, when he's on the floor, it's going to be a physical battle. The Pistons always want to try to establish that early in the game to make teams uncomfortable, right? And that's what Isaiah Stewart's going to do every single night. And so that's why I believe he started and he played well. One thing I like about Stu, man, is just his ability to move his feet for a big man, right? I mean, you never feel comfortable with anybody out on the island with Trey Young, right? But Stu's ability to move his feet is what really helps him. He had a nice block on him, just tossed out of bounds. So yeah, Stu played well. He did Isaiah Stewart things like we always talk about. He set that tone. Tobias Harris finally hit a corner three. <laughs> now, Tobias played solid tonight, man. He had one of his better games, I would say, this season on both ends of the court. There were some shots that I wish he could have knocked down that he met, that he missed. But his offense is slowly starting to come around. You can see it game by game. You can tell he's starting to settle in and what his workload is going to be defensively. And now he's adjusting. And now you're seeing his offense start to come alive a little bit. But he's not hesitating now when he's shooting. He's catching it and he's getting it right up. It was good to see him get back on track because I was beginning to wonder if the Pistons just start just focusing on him getting offense in the mid-range. But tonight he got back on track. Jaden Ivey, man, he's just showing more and more what his potential defensively can be for this team and he he was all over the place he was all over the court it reminded me just how he was hounding everybody on the court it reminded me of Dwayne Wade the way Dwayne Wade used to just throw his body around and just make plays block here or steal there just making plays right that's kind of what Jaden was doing tonight he was all over the place on both ends he played solid offensively tonight but to me his defense is really what continues to stand out man he's committed 100% to that end he is committed 100% to that end. It doesn't matter who he's guarding. I actually like him guarding Trey Young because he's 6'4 and he's so athletic. He's got great foot speed. He's got great lateral movement. And if Trey is able to get by him, sometimes able because he's so fast to get back in front and defend, right? He had another monster block tonight too on Clint Capella. His timing is getting better defensively, especially on his help side defense. He looked really, really good there. And he tossed it out of bounds. It was almost a duplicate of the block he had last game against Trey Mann. Same spot in the floor, same result. Spiked out of bounds. And you can just see he's really into it defensively, man. He spiked out of bounds. He was turned, man. You could see it. After his block, he said, and we got kids watching, so we got to censor this. He said, get that FM bull jive out of here, ninja. So, yeah. If anybody questions J.I.'s dog, I don't, I don't see how you can do that at this point. He, he's a dog. And that was clear tonight. I think we're seeing more and more what he's going to be able to do when he's a polished basketball player because you're already seeing just the jump that he's taking so far. And I'm holding steady to what I said back in August. I really believe Jaden Ivey is going to win most improved player. I'm not wavering on that. And he's actually giving me more confidence because he's just showing 
different aspects of his game that he continues to improve in, right? But to, but defensively, you're already seeing that he has the potential to be an amazing two-way player. An amazing two-way player just because of his effort and just because of his natural ability. Now it's all about learning the fundamental side. And once he gets that, it's a wrap. It's a wrap. Let's get to K, man. So first of all, shout out to K, man, becoming the second player ever in Pistons history to have now three straight triple doubles. He did have seven turnovers, so he has to continue to watch that, right? The last two games, he's been great. He's had three and two turnovers, respectively, the last two games. So seven, got to get that down. But he is showing signs that he is at least moving in the right direction. And when you have the ball in your hands that much to where you're getting triple doubles, you're gonna get turnovers and to be honest most of the turnovers that he had came in that fourth quarter it was just some bad decision making that he had there and he knew it there was one fast break bounce pass that he just misplaced i believe it was to either the tim hardaway or lee beasley and it skipped out of bounds it went through his legs that's just one of those things in that moment in that situation you can't you can't make those mistakes right you got to make sure that that pass is on time and on target but overall he i will say he played a really good game um, he was being guarded by Dyson Daniels, who's one of the best defenders in the league. Uh, he's very wiry, very rangy, very long, athletic. So K did have to work, but he, he did play an efficient game aside from the turnovers. And most importantly, he finished the game, right? I know a lot was made last game about K, about how he did score in the fourth quarter and how LaMelo Ball had 15 points in the fourth quarter. And you're right. You know, in the fourth quarter, that's winning time. That's when you got to show up and that's when you got to win games against teams you're supposed to win games against, right? That's totally fair and I totally agree with that. Tonight, he most definitely did that. The Pistons somehow got down by one after being up by 24 in the first half, late in the fourth quarter. And the Pistons had the ball and K drove left and hit a tough shot over two defenders, one of them being Dyson Daniels with his left hand, kissed off the glass. Beautiful shot, beautiful shot, clutch shot, man. I got to give him credit for that because you know, as much as you want to say that he's not closing, this was this was one of his signature closing games. You know, he closed tonight. But that wasn't all because he intentionally left time on the clock just in case the shot didn't go in, right? So that left about eight seconds left on the clock for the Hawks. They inbound the ball in the backcourt for Trey Young. J.I.'s guarding him. J.I. stays in front of him for most of the possession, but Trey's able to get by him late and get to the hoop. Sue comes over to help, and Trey dishes it off, and out of nowhere, as Capella goes up for the shot, K comes over help side and knocks it out of bounds without fouling. It's, listen, as great as that shot was that he made, the biggest play and the most memorable play from K will be that block. It won't be the triple-double. It won't be the shot late. It won't be the seven assists in the first quarter, which he did all those things. It's going to be that block. That's how you finish a game. He made the two plays in the end that got the Pistons the win. And he has to get credit for that. He's still a young player, man. But he's showing signs of progression. Right, the turnovers are still high here and there, but the last two games have shown what he can be. And for him to step up late like he did is what I think all of us expected from him when he was drafted number one. These moments are the moments that we were looking forward to as Pistons fans when it came to Kay Cunningham. And he delivered, he delivered. He had a triple double, he had the game winning shot, he made the game winning block. I mean, what else, what else do you want? What else do you want? Did he play a perfect game? No. Did anybody play a perfect game? No. But winning time, in winning time, he stepped up to the plate and made the plays that needed to be made. And you got to give him credit for that. You just have to. So shout out to K, man. Way to finish, bro. So here's what a triple-double looked like. 22 points, 11 rebounds, 13 assists, one steal, one block, and those seven turnovers in 36 minutes. 8 for 17 shooting, 1 for 4 from 3, 5 for 5 from the free throw line. So he played a really, really good game. And despite the Pistons blowing a 24-point lead, they showed resiliency. He showed resiliency. And he led him to a win tonight. Jaden finished with 18 points, three assists, three rebounds, one steal, three blocks, four turnovers in 30 minutes, seven for 13 shooting, one for four from three, three of seven from the free throw line. So that was one thing too. I need Jaden to knock down those free throws. I need him to knock down those free throws. I know he usually is pretty solid, but three of seven is an anomaly for him. He's a much better shooter than that. But overall, once again, he is giving me, he's, he's giving the Pistons everything he has on both ends of the floor. He's not making every perfect decision, right? But he's giving you all the effort. He's giving you all the effort. And that's all you can ask for. And just seeing the emotion that he's playing with, he's not just getting emotional off of dunks, off of fast break dunks. He's getting emotional off of blocks, off of 24 second shot clocks, off of game winning blocks. You know what I mean? Like him and Kay were hype at the end of this game when it was over. They're playing with pride. He's playing with pride. And his demeanor and his fire that he plays with, it gives everybody else a jolt of energy, man. It just gets everybody else into the game. So I'm proud of these young guys. I'm proud of our backcourt. A lot of things still got to be cleaned up. 
and we're still only 10 games into the season. So we have a lot more basketball to be played. Tobias finished with 22 points, six rebounds, two assists, three blocks, zero turnovers on seven for 13 shooting, five of eight from three, three of four from the line. This may have been his best game of the season, guys. He didn't have the 14 rebounds like he's had in previous games, but he had three blocks. So like I said before, whether his offense has been on or off this season, one thing you can't say is that the defense is not there. He's bringing the effort defensively every single night. But tonight, the offense was there too, and it was efficient. He shot better than 50% from two and three. So once again, this is the Tobias Harris that I think fans were hoping to see. And I gotta give him credit too, because the Pistons offense got stagnant midway through the fourth quarter before K came back into the game. And Tobias Harris said, hey, give me the ball, I'll get a bucket. He got a few buckets that really kept the, the Pistons above water and kept the lead for them late in that fourth quarter. So uh, you got to give him credit, right? He also showed up late in the clutch. He didn't play a perfect game, but he definitely played well enough, especially down the stretch for the Pistons to win this game, and he did that. Tim Hardaway Jr. has seven points, five rebounds, four assists, three steals, three turnovers, in 29 minutes on two for four shooting, one or two from three. So he had a quiet night. He didn't even take a lot of shots. He only shot two for four. But one thing that I noticed about him tonight, he was just trying to make sure that he was affecting the game somehow. Because many nights, he'll have 15 to 20 points and two assists, and that's it. Right? No rebounds, no steals, no blocks. And that's okay, right? Because he's a scorer. But tonight, he only had seven points, but he also gave you five rebounds, four assists, and three steals. So he was just trying to find a way to still be an impact, to still be effective on the floor, even if he wasn't scoring. And that's what you want, right? You want to instill that type of mindset because you're not going to have it going every night. You're not going to have 25 points every night. So how are you affecting the game in other ways? This was very encouraging for me because this shows me that Tim Hardaway Jr., as long as he's starting, can affect the game with more than just his scoring. And I've said it before, our guards have been consistently getting on the glass, right? Everybody. It hasn't just been Isaiah Stewart or Jalen Duren and that's it. Right. Tobias Harris has been double digits. Um, Tim Hardaway Jr. tonight, he had five rebounds. Kate's had triple doubles the last three games, so you know he's had at least 10. Jaden's on the glass, so everybody's crashing the glass. And I love to see that, and I love to see Tim Hardaway Jr. tonight just finding ways to be effective, even if he wasn't putting the ball in the hoop. Malik Beasley, man, he has been a breath of fresh air, man, since he's been here. I know that we all know what happened last game, right? We know that, you know, he didn't box out, and that's why Brandon Miller got the game winning put back layup at the end. Yes. But keep in mind, too, on the Ron Holland steal to put the Pistons up that last game, guess who got the strip? Malik Beasley. So I'm not excusing the, the box out at the end, but I'm saying is that we're not even in that position if he doesn't get the steal, right? You're just trying to give credit where credit is due. But getting back to tonight, he got back to being Beasley. He had 22 points off the bench, two rebounds, one assist, two turnovers in 34 minutes on 8 for 14 shooting. Three from nine from three, three out of five from the free throw line. So Beasley is such a great pickup for this team, man. It just shows how important having spacing on the floor is because once again, he has those 22 points. A lot of those will catch and shoot. And guess who's getting him the ball? Either Jaden or Cade. So just having spacers on the floor makes the game so much easier for our guards who are distributors. And it's gonna make life easier for Beasley because all he has to do is catch it and go up most of the time. So he played great, man. He's a shooter, you know, shooters shoot. And like I always say, if he's open, there's not many guys in the league I won't take in that shot more than him. So shout out to him. He played a great game. Fontecchio had 11 points, 5 rebounds, 1 assist, 1 steal, a turnover in 20 minutes. 3 for 6 shooting, 1 for 4 from 3, 4 for 5 from the free throw line. He played a good game. He played very good defense, right? He was ball hawking. He wasn't getting caught on back doors. He was very locked in defensively tonight. And I was really happy to see that. Um, he did knock down 1-3. And like I mentioned before, I don't want him taking any threes if he has to put the ball on the floor. And it seemed like every time he put the ball on the floor tonight, he missed. And when he did it, when he caught it right in the pocket and went straight up, he made it. So <laughs> I know he can put the ball on the floor, but I don't want to see that. If you can't go straight up with it, move the ball and let it come back to you if it's supposed to. But he played solid defense tonight. That's what stood out to me the most was his defense. And I think if anything, you can bank on getting that from him every single night. We've talked about Ron Holland a lot lately, man. Ron Holland is continuing to impress. He's continuing to impress. I mentioned it before. The way he's playing now, I was hoping to see that by the end of this season. I thought it was going to take him some time before he was a consistent contributor. But he continues to show, man, that he is ready. He is ready to be a contributor already. I, I know it may be a little bit early. I'm not saying this should happen now. But I don't think it's too far-fetched to say that he could push for a starting spot by the end of the season. 
right? Just the things that he gives you defensively. His ability to guard multiple positions. He can guard one through four easily. His ability to guard the perimeter and also to play big in the paint is is very valuable man very very valuable for this team and he also continues to show his dog man the dog mentality that he has man and to be honest this this game seemed a little bit personal for him because opposite side him was number one pick in this past draft zachary reza shea and there was a play where ron holland went right at him on offense and scored on him knocked him to the floor and hit him with the two small right and it's funny because after that as he started running back down court defensively you could see him talking to himself and i think that conversation he was having with himself was man this dude ain't better than me there's no way this dude is better than this dude. i'm better than this dude he was number one but i'm better than this dude that's that's kind of the vibe i got from him just watching him that's usually what happens when you see guys go at each other like that who are drafted in close proximity of each other in the same draft they're trying to go at each other they're trying to prove who the better player is and I think tonight, Ron was out to prove that he is better than Zachary Reza Shea. And honestly, I can't say that he's wrong. So the Pistons are on the right side of a nail-biter, a one-point game, by beating the Atlanta Hawks tonight, 122 to 121. The Pistons have to continue to work on finishing games and playing four quarters and not letting their foot off the gas when they go up. This shows that they have the ability to be very, very good, but they also have the ability to be bad. And that's that inconsistent play I've talked about, right? I've talked about how young teams, they play up and down to their competition. The Pistons are a better team than the Hawks. The same way they're a better team than the Hornets. They're just better. And when they lock in for four quarters and match the intensity of the opposing team, you're going to win. You're going to win. At that point, it's just talent versus talent when you're playing with the same amount of effort, right? And the Pistons have more talent. The Pistons are better. So that's going to be what they have to continue to work on and hopefully these learning lessons are showing them that on any given night, any team can beat you. Any team can come back on you, right? Even if you are the better team, these are still NBA players. These are still NBA players. And when you have Trey Young on the other side, if you give him an opportunity to get back into the game, more times than not, he's going to take advantage of it. So hopefully the Pistons learned a valuable lesson for the second time tonight. So now the Pistons are sitting at four and six. And honestly, that's about where I thought they would be at 10 games. I thought they would be near or at 500. I thought there'd be some growing pains early, some sloppy play, and there has been. When you have a young team with new faces, a new coaching staff, it's gonna take time to get that consistency. It's gonna take time to gel. It's gonna take time to be consistent on both ends. And we're seeing that. And we're gonna continue to see that, guys, unfortunately. It's just gonna be something that happens throughout the season. I think post All-Star break is when we'll see much, much less of that. But the beginning of the season, this is what I expected. And I'm still holding firm to the Pistons winning between 30 and 35 games this season because they're sitting at four or six and they should be at least at five and five, right? So 500 basketball is 41 wins and the Pistons are still learning how to play together. So going forward, they're only gonna get better and better, right? So I'm holding fast to that. I have the Pistons sitting at 33, 34 wins for the season and I'm gonna stick to that and we'll see what happens. But what did you see in tonight's game that I missed? Let me know down below and let's talk about it. Next up is the Houston Rockets on Sunday at home, and that should be a fun game. Are the Pistons going to win this game? That's going to be a tough one, especially without Asar Thompson, right? We know that Houston has a lot of wings over there. The Rockets are currently 5-3, and three, and they are much improved. So the Pistons cannot play the way they play tonight and expect to win that game. They're going to have to bring it for all four quarters. The effort, the energy, the consistency is going to have to all be there if they want to pull this out at home. So we'll see. And as you guys know, I'll be right back here post-game to break it all down. Make sure you guys like the video, man. I appreciate all the support on this channel. And the more you guys support, the more I can continue to give you quality content all season long. So I appreciate all the support. Appreciate you hanging with your boy. And as always, Detroit versus everybody. Peace. Rewind 2021. There was a parade in my city. Number one pick, dancing in the street. Everybody was hitting the grid. Kate arrived in the D. And it was live as can be. They can ball, but we didn't want dream or bleed or Scotty B. No when he got hurt, everyone lost it. Storylines leaking, no faucet. Caught him wash when he broke his tibia. All the haters, time to get it really yeah. Everybody wanna be skip Bayless. Wanna throw shape, okay, say less. Dudes went number one for a reason. It'll click by the end of the season. Yeah. When he wins, most improved player. Gonna be a movie, here's the trailer. Don't say I didn't try to warn ya. Co signed by Win Ben Yama. He was raised in Texas. But now he's Detroit flexing Team you would say he was killing him Got him effed up, let me quote Eminem Nowadays everybody wanna talk like they got
got something to say, but nothing comes out when they move their lips. That's a bunch of generation money, lovers act like they forgot about K. Nowadays, everybody wanna talk, but they got something to say, but nothing comes out when they move their lips. That's a bunch of generation money, lovers act like they forgot about K. They forgot about K. Uh, uh, they forgot about how you forget about K.